This trio of emergency calls needs to be heard to be believed. Sandwiched between two shocking 911 calls from victims of crimes fit for Hollywood is an uplifting story from down under. An Ohio bank manager came home to find his wife and children being held hostage. He was forced to rob the bank and hand over the money to the kidnappers. When the criminals left, he called 911. 911, what is your emergency? Oh, they just they took my kids hostage. They're heading west on the Millsboro West Road. They took. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. They took your kids. I they, my, I got my kids back, but they're leaving. They, they robbed the bank. It was they were here all day. Okay. Send someone after them as soon as possible. They're okay. They're heading towards us. What's your address, sir? What's your address? Forty-eight hundred six Millsboro West Road. Okay. So they, 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 okay, who are they? Do you know them? I have no idea. It was some kid. He was here yesterday when I got home last night. Mm-hmm. Um, were they, was, was he armed? Yes. Yes, he had a gun. Okay. Um, Did you get a license plate? No, I was trying to be the police, so that it wasn't lost him, because he was supposed to tie me up, and he didn't, because okay. I fought it. And you said it was a tan what? Four Taurus? Four Taurus. West. West on no furrow? Yeah. Okay. Ryan, did you copy the, where they're heading? Honey, everything's okay. Anybody hurt there? Anybody need an ambulance, sir? No. Everything's okay. 700 all units. Just stay down here, guys. Okay. Is he a white male? Yes. White male, uh, about five, eight, five, nine. Uh, probably. 130 pounds, maybe 140. And was it a handgun? Yes, 380. Uh, I think it said Thunderbolt. Was it your gun or? No. No, okay. He was at his residence all night. Is that right? He was there all night? Yes, he was at his residence yesterday. Uh, all right, what's your name? Brian McConnell. N-C-O. Yeah, away from and then E-L. Did your doors all locked, Brian? Yes, my doors were locked. Okay. What's your call back? They have weapons. What did the, what was the suspect say his name was again? He didn't tell me his name. He didn't tell you, okay. And he, right now, how old do you think he is? I would say early 20s, late teens. And you said about 5'11"? Uh, probably more like 5'9 or 5'10. 5'9, 5'10. Was he stocky, skinny? No. Skinny. Um, it's, I don't know if you <laughs> What kind of capability you have, but he scratched my face. So if there's any chance of getting, I know, you know, too many people watch the FI or whatever, but if there's any tr- okay. possibility of that. Okay. So you last saw him going west on Mills Road, West Road, like he was going yes. towards Crawford County. Okay. Yeah, someone stopped it. Someone rolled by and picked him up and pulled into my neighbor's car. Oh, okay, so he's not alone. Did you get a look at the driver? No, I did not. I, I, it sounded like the kid apologized the entire time. He said it wasn't his idea. He said that the guy would kill him and come back and get my family. And it was, um, that's why I want someone here right away. I convinced him to let me. Mm-hmm. And I called another one of my employees. He thought he was giving me the full power. So you, you work at the bank? Yeah, she What bank? What, it said the bank you work at is on tape. Is that the bank they robbed? Yeah. What, what is the, what's the address, honey? It's 688. Uh, they made three homemade family house in July. Okay. So 688 Lexington Spring Railroad in Ontario? Yeah. Okay. What's the name of the bank? Two bank. And you, you're a manager there or something? And yeah. So they basically made you rob the bank? Yeah. Is that what it does? And it held your family hostage? Okay. Yes. Alright. Hold on. I'm going to turn to the Ontario also because I want to get them on the line. Okay. But, so, does anybody at the bank know about this? Yes. Did you tell anybody at the bank anything? No. Well, except for my lead seller, which I need to reach out to her and let her know that my family is okay. Okay, how many people are in your house? It's me, my wife, my three kids. Okay, hold on just a minute. Okay, did they take anything from your residence? No. No. Okay. Just the bank was robbed. The actual bank, but he, they were at his house. 
they made him do it. The victim had to go to the bank and rob the bank. Just stay on the phone, dude. So we'll, we'll work the lady now. Well, I'm going to get Ontario Police to go over to Key Bank, okay? So just stay on the line. Yeah, how much did you get from the bank, sir? Do you know? It was probably 100 or 200,000. Uh-huh. Can you come with your quickly? They're, they're on their way, okay? Mm-hmm. What's the teller's name, sir? Uh, at the bank. Uh, there's, if there's a teller at the bank, she doesn't know what's going on. The so, teller I told was, um, I went in before anybody got there. Oh, uh, okay. So you, t- okay, the teller you told was not at the bank at the time. No. Okay. I told her by the clock this morning. Okay. So, so you went by yourself to the bank, right? Why not? You your family. Okay. Yes. So, Sir, could you, you didn't see the driver at all? You couldn't tell if no. it was white or black? Okay. It was dark and far away. Okay. Raining. Okay. It's pretty right. cheap. I called you as he was driving away. Actually, I right. called before he went out the door. Okay, okay. Is your wife home with you too, sir? Yes. Okay. And then how many children? Two. Two children. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Okay, sir, I'll let you go then. Okay, Brian McConnell is the manager of Key Bank in Richmond County, where he lived with his wife, Katie, and their two children, aged two and four. At around 2 p.m. on Thursday, November 5th, 2015, Katie arrived home, but she sensed something was off when she entered her son's room. Then the closet door opened and a man stepped out. His face was covered with a bandana, but the terrified mother could easily see the 380 handgun the intruder had in his hand. To ease her oldest child's fears, Katie said they were playing a Halloween game. The intruder gave her a message on a card that said he would kill her and her family unless she did what he said. The kidnappers planned on staying the night and forcing her husband to rob the bank in the morning, and that's precisely what they did. Katie testified. My heart sank when I found out he was going to be there all night. When Brian arrived home, there was little he could do, and he too was held captive with his family overnight. The bank manager entered his branch early the next morning. When I drove past, I saw Brian's car in front of the bank and was like, huh, that's weird. Normally, he doesn't park there. The employees usually parked along the bushes. I was thinking he probably just had to grab some paperwork and was you know, going to come back out and then park where he's supposed to park. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that the bank was being robbed. Brian stole an estimated one to $200,000 from the safe and returned home to exchange the cash for his family's freedom. When he handed over the money, he was able to get a hold of the hostage taker's gun. For some reason, he wanted me to move everything from the bag that I took into his bag. He set the gun down next to him. He had done that several times through the night, but it was never more than a few inches away from him. And this time it was about six inches away from him. While the hostage taker was packing the stolen money, Brian grabbed his gun. But the family man had seen the masked man communicating with a partner. He was clearly very scared. When I had that gun on him, you know, I was thinking I could shoot him and end this, but I had No idea of who's outside with what weapons, how many people, who's outside of the other family's homes. Plus, I didn't want my son coming up and and seeing someone bleeding. So in that second, I just decided not to shoot him. McConnell unloaded the weapon and gave it back to the criminal. After 17 hours, the man took the money and left the McConnell family unharmed. The bank manager then called 911. His call was connected to the Richland County Dispatch at 8.24 a.m. Police arrived at the Ontario branch and began to process the scene. On November 23rd, Cleveland Division of the FBI issued a press release which said they were working with the Richland County Sheriff's Office and the Ontario Police Department to solve the disturbing case. A description and sketch of the suspect who held the family at ransom were circulated, but police had no information regarding the second suspect. The FBI asked for the public's assistance and offered a reward of $25,000 for information that led to the successful identification and prosecution of the suspect. 
On December 2, 2015, two men were arrested in connection with the robbery. 19-year-old Taylor Chrisman was the man who had broken into the family home, and 24-year-old Chris Hill was his man on the outside and getaway driver. The suspects were charged with four counts of kidnapping and hostage taking, bank robbery, possession of ransom money, and brandishing a firearm. Hill also was charged with intimidating a witness. The day after their arrest, a woman employed in Ohio's family court system handed around $120,000 to the FBI. On February 2, 2015, the Northern District of Ohio Attorney's Office issued a press statement. It reports that while working at Marion County Family Court, 42-year-old Sarah Garrett had improperly searched the Ohio Law Enforcement Gateway database to find the address of the bank manager, which she gave to Hill and Chrisman. After the robbery, they kept the money in her apartment. When the trial began in 2017, all three defendants pled guilty. Public defender Deborah Migdell described Garrett as a small-town girl, with a spotless record who got mixed up in a relationship with Hill. Migdal said her client feared Hill and said, things went from tantalizing and exciting to dangerous. Before sentencing, the McConnells, who separated following the traumatic incident, read statements. Katie asked the court to imagine the impact it had on her family. Imagine a four-year-old having to face that evil, she said. You took away his innocence. He will be scarred forever. Brian no longer works at Key Bank and his son still asks about the day the man with the gun came to their home. After that day, Brian said, my whole world was turned upside down. Garrett was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. The prosecuting attorney, Linda Barr, commented, it's the government's belief that she is getting off lightly. Hill, the getaway driver, was sentenced to 25 years in prison, but the harshest punishment was reserved for Chrisman. For breaking in and holding the bank manager and his family hostage, he was sentenced to 37 years in prison. The convicted kidnappers and bank robbers were also ordered to repay almost $24,000 that weren't recovered after the theft. For more incredible 911 calls, subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up so you don't miss the next one. Our next call is from Australia, and it's sure to put a smile on your face. In August 2020, an extremely new father, David, called local emergency services on triple zero. Ambulance emergency, what town or suburb? I'm a uh, black town on the M4. Head, um, what, 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 what it? Reservoir Road. Sorry. Reservoir Road. Yeah. Okay. Exactly what happened? Um, we just delivered the baby. Okay. In the car on the side of the road. All right. And are you with the patient? The, the patient now. Yeah. You got the mum and dad. Right. Okay, that's good. All right. Just stay with me. Uh, the baby's pink. Is that a problem? No, that's okay. Is the baby completely out? Yeah, the baby's completely out. How's mum and how's bub? Uh, are they both okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm organising health for you now. Just stay on the line, and I'll tell you what to do next. Yep. All right. So, is the baby crying or breathing? Yeah. And have you yeah, got some towels? Oh, oh, that's now. okay. I appreciate it. That's okay. So have, have you got any towels or um, clean? Yeah, something clean? My job in there. yeah, So just clean, just gently wipe off the baby's mouth and nose. Dry the baby off with a clean towel if you have one. And then wrap the baby in your jumper, okay? Um, cover, yeah. cover the baby's head but not its face because you really need to keep him um, keep it warm. Cover the baby's head but not its face. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. you're outside, just keep the baby warm. Um, and without pulling the cord tight, put the baby in mum's arms on her belly and be sure the cord is not wrapped around the baby's neck. And they go the cord's not wrapped around the baby's yeah, neck. Thank you. It's really important you keep yeah. both of them warm. Yep. And, um, and do not baby on mum's chest. Yeah, and do not cut yep. the cord, okay? No, I will not cut the cord. Good. We haven't delivered the Good. Afterbirth. And do not, no, that, do not pull on the cord and the afterbirth no. should deliver soon. Tell me if anything changes, okay? What's your first name? My first name is David. David. Well, congratulations, David. Thanks for just having me on. You did a good job without me. <laughs> um, how's mum going? I read, okay. I, read, I read a book. I read a book about half an hour. Oh, that's great. 
there you go. Why do you need an obstetrician? Yeah, well, because I don't want to ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> you did a really good job. I just delivered my own baby. <laughs> a girl. All right, what was your name? My name's Peter. Congratulations. Thanks, Peter. Well done. Uh, I think it's the best way possible, but I would never speak again. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Me too. Uh, Take care. Bye bye. His wife, Angela, had been experiencing early contractions at home. As a joke, David took out his SAS survival handbook that his grandfather had given him when he was 13 years old. After reading the single page on childbirth, the expectant father joked to his wife that he could deliver their baby. He told the Kyle and Jackie O radio show, I pull it out about a half an hour before we left as a joke just to scare Ange a bit and um, saying I could do it if I had to. Opting for experienced medical staff to deliver their first child, the excited couple got in the car and headed for the hospital. But then, things suddenly started to move along much more quickly than expected. While driving along the M4 highway in Blacktown, it became clear that there was no time to get to the hospital. So David stopped in the breakdown lane. What he had joked about just 30 minutes earlier was about to be put to the test. David, you were you were super calm, but when you were actually delivering the baby, were you as calm as that? I didn't feel as calm as what I sounded, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Did it just when 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 your wife said, Oh, I can feel the head, how long was it before that and the baby actually coming out? Oh, uh, not even minutes, I don't think. It was very little fast. I I think I come past the the servos on the M4 and I pull up only a couple hundred metres past it. So, Incredibly, the survival guide had taught him exactly what he needed to know. And armed with his recently gained knowledge, he assisted his wife give birth to a healthy baby girl. Paramedic Peter Slay, who spoke with the new father shortly after the delivery, made sure both mom and baby were warm. But David was a step ahead. He had already safely removed the umbilical cord from his daughter's neck, cleared her nose and mouth, and checked her breathing. Being more used to speaking to panicked fathers calling for help, Peter was impressed with how at ease David sounded. Luckily, the dad, who said he didn't feel as calm as he sounded, was soon assisted by paramedic Belinda Callaghan. When they finally reached the hospital, Angela spent a while recovering on the maternity ward but the family of three were soon allowed home. When speaking to the Kyle and Jackie O show about giving birth, Angela said, it was just not how I expected it to go at all. The baby girl who couldn't wait to come out and see the world was named Lexi. Marian Andrzejewski fled Nazi-occupied Poland as a child and believed his new home of Canada was filled with good people. But when the 74-year-old called 911 after being physically assaulted in his own apartment, he got anything but kindness and help. 911 emergency, do you need... Yes, my apartment is 1402. Do you need the police, the fire, the ambulance? Yes, sir? please, please. What's your emergency? Yes, I... Oh, I sir, what please, is the emergency? Please, please, yes, I need your help. Yeah. For what? Why do you need help? To... to... person... Uh, and br- Yes. Sir? Robert, Robert, my apartment. Okay, are they there now? Please, please, yeah. No, sir, answer yeah. the question. Take yeah. a deep breath. Yeah. Quit saying yes. Yes. Stop please. it. No, no more yes. Take a deep yeah. breath. Please. Sir, take a deep breath. Okay, thank you. Okay, take a deep breath. Yeah, thank you. No, sir, you need to listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is going on there? But me, my English is not good. I am very uh, to Robert. Okay, so did you come home? Yeah. Okay, were you there? Yeah. Did they hurt you? Pardon me? Did you get injured? I don't understand. Are you hurt? You have a... and two robbers broken my door. Are you hurt? Yes, yeah. Yes, you hurt? You need an ambulance? Yeah, I'm... Yeah. Do you have it? Okay, sir, what is your injuries? I have a problem, my nose and my... My did, eyes. Your, your, or did they hit yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sir. Yeah, take a deep yeah, breath. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Are they there? Where'd they go? Pardon me? I'm sorry. I, I, my English is not good. Okay, where are the people that came in? Two men, uh, two, two, two men and one lady. 
She lives across uh, my apartment. Yeah. Okay. She names holiday. How did they get into your place? She she and the two uh, two people broke in my door and. Okay. Did they hurt you? I don't know. This. Okay. Do you have any any bruises? Did they slap you? Did they punch you? Did they kick you? Did they have weapons? Are you injured? Do you need an ambulance? Do you need a hospital? Maybe. I don't know. Do you, you know what a hospital yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Would you need to go there? Maybe. maybe I don't know. Okay. Well, maybe, what injuries maybe. do you have? Sorry, my English is not good. I am... <sighs> Sorry. Well, you're, it's hard for me to understand, sir. It's hard for me to help you because I can't understand what you're trying to tell me. I live... I, I live what I language yeah. do you speak? Yes, I long. What do you speak? What language? My language is Polish. How did they get in? Like, did Pardon? they bust the door open? Pardon me? They've broken my door. So they just opened it? Yes, no, it's uh, broken. I have a, uh, what names is special? Uh, for, um, uh, I don't understand what names. Uh, it's, uh, it's broken, broken. Okay, how come you didn't get your door fixed? Okay, thank you very much. No, no, sir, don't hang up. Hello? Yes. Don't hang up. Yes, okay. No, no, don't hang up. I'll wait till the officer's with you. Are you alone? Yes. You're alone? Yeah. Okay. They'll be with you soon, okay? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Four, okay, three. I see police. Okay. One, three, three, okay, I no, see no, police. No, 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 no. Keep the line until police are with you. Yes, okay, okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, are police there? Yes, I see. I will watch the police. Can I speak with them? No, no, I see police is downstairs. <laughs> Let me know when the police are in the building. Yes, I wait for them. Okay, I okay. See, I see downstairs. Okay, they will come up soon. Yes. Okay, if police is gone, I'm gonna... Can I speak with them? Hello, sir? Good. The World War II survivor was at home in his public housing apartment on October 23rd, 2010, when two men broke in through his front door and assaulted him. One of the attackers later admitted to punching and hitting the elderly man about 15 times with a weapon. The victim, who said he hadn't been as afraid since he escaped the Nazis, begged for his life and, when the terror was over, managed to call for help. But the 911 operator did little to ease the shaken man's worries. Even though it was immediately apparent that the man didn't speak English, the woman whose job it was to provide assistance showed little patience with him. At one point, she fired question after question at the man, which would have been difficult for anyone to follow after they had just been assaulted, let alone an older person with almost no English. The attack victim did his best to communicate, but it wasn't until more than three minutes into the call, the dispatcher asked what language he spoke. Andrew Juski's lawyer, James Harbick, says at this point, she should have used a translation service that was available 24 hours. Still, she continued speaking with the caller, all the while growing more impatient. Harbick told CTV Ottawa he thought the 911 operator was very inappropriate, then added, actually, it was quite horrible. Andrew Juski thanked the woman throughout the call and awaited help. Ottawa police would later launch a review into his mishandled call. When police officers arrived at the apartment building, they were approached by Gail Daugherty, a known drug-addicted criminal and the mother of one of the attackers. Daugherty claimed that the caller had held her against her will and sexually assaulted her. Andrew Juski's lawyer said that then, the police accepted their stories as to what happened, and my client was charged with sexual assault and forcible confinement. Ottawa police then took the elderly Polish man from his 14th floor unit to the hospital, where the injuries he sustained in the attack were treated. He would need two eye surgeries in the following years to repair the damage. But then, and what must have come as a horrific shock to the victim, he was questioned as a suspect for four hours and then arrested on suspicion of unlawful confinement and sexual assault. Because there was no one to bail him out, Andrew Juski spent the next 75 days in in road jail waiting for a bail hearing. When he was released, Andrew Juski, a retired artist who had work displayed in the Canadian War Museum, couldn't paint for the next year as he was left unable to concentrate. When his case finally went to trial in 2012, one of the attackers testified that he beat up the older man because his mother had said he demanded sex from her. 
The defense told the jury that Andrzejewski had invited Daugherty to help herself to some things from his apartment, but once inside, she demanded money. Knowing the crack addict would spend it on drugs, Andrzejewski refused to give her any money and led her out of his apartment by the arm. Then, at around 3 p.m., her son and another man broke down his door and attacked him. In the past, police had accused Daugherty of threatening to make false sexual assault accusations against a parishioner to try to extort money from him. Andrzejewski's lawyer questioned why police believed her version of events. He also asked why the operator didn't use the translation service. Mike Flanagan of Ottawa Police spoke to the Ottawa Sun. I have some issues on the way that call was handled. And uh, as a result of uh, uh, hearing that call, I have ordered that we conduct a complete review on um, essentially how that call was handled uh, from the 911 operator, right from inception to uh, dispatch. The defendant told the Ottawa Citizen, and when the police came, they arrested me. I told them that assailants don't call 911 for help, victims do, and I was the victim. The most difficult part of all of this was thinking that I may go to jail for something I didn't do. The jury sided with the defense, and Andrew Juski was acquitted of all charges. However, the effects were lasting. Following his initial happiness after the trial, the falsely accused man told the citizen he was seeing a psychiatrist and said, it's just been horrible. I'm still living with the horror and its after effects. I'm shocked. Now I'm not, not good sleeping. I'm, uh, I have problems sleep. In 2014, Andrew Juski sued some Ottawa police officers and the 911 dispatcher for $500,000 for alleged negligence, unlawful confinement, cruel and unusual punishment, and malicious prosecution. In the civil suit, the artist alleged that he wasn't given his medication, a Polish-English dictionary, or glasses when he was in jail. What's more, the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board rejected his claim for compensation for his injuries because an Ottawa police detective had testified that he was guilty of the crimes he had already been acquitted of in court. The Ottawa Police Services Board attempted to have the case thrown out of court, but a trial was ordered to go ahead. However, in 2020, the dispute was settled out of court when the wrongfully charged man was given a cash settlement of an undisclosed amount. Following the settlement, Andrzejewski's lawyer told the Ottawa citizen, nobody should be treated this way. We were finally able to have his suffering recognized by way of this settlement. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting and subscribe to join us in the next episode of True 911.